in the paper remarks on the mind body question eugene wigner put forward the wigner's friend thought experiment which highlighted or at least visualize for people like me some of the gaping holes with these measurement axioms so what is the wigner's friend thought experiment and then how does that elucidate the measurement problem the wigner's friend thought experiment again and I, i have mentioned this before in previous conversations goes back at least to Hugh Everett's long form PhD thesis. But again, Wigner and Everett were probably talking at the time. Um, it's very simple to state there's two observers. One is inside a box that is uh, sufficiently sealed for the duration of the experiment that we can treat it as a perfectly sealed box. Inside the box, there is an observer called Wigner's friend with some quantum system that Wigner's friend is measuring. And outside the box is Wigner. So an observer in, an observer out. Um, Wigner's friend does what is presumably a measurement process on the quantum system. Um, and the question is, do we invoke the measurement axioms or not. And the way I like to think about the Wigner's friend thought experiment is in terms of a flowchart. And I'm happy to send you a copy of this flowchart. But Wigner's friend makes you, it it forces you to make some decision about what you want to do. Wigner on the outside describes this system with a quantum state, a quantum state evolving in some way. Question one, does the quantum state collapse or not? If yes, then we have another question. Does it collapse because of Wigner's friend's measurement? If yes, then we run into the measurement problem, the category problem, all the problems we talked about. Why does that thing count as a measurement? Why, what if Wigner's friend were smaller? What if Wigner's friend were a tardigrade or a bacterium or a buckyball? Like, at what point is it a measurement? What point's not a measurement? We run headfirst into the measurement problem as well as the other problems. If you say no to that question, so yes, to the state quantum state collapsing, but no to Wigner's, Wigner's friend having been responsible for it, then there's some other mechanism that causes collapse, and this leads you into the dynamical collapse approaches to quantum theory. Now suppose instead of saying yes, it collapses, we say no, it does not collapse. This, by the way, will have different uh, experimental signatures in principle, because if it has not collapsed, then in principle there are interference experiments you could do with the entire box that you wouldn't have been able to do if it truly collapsed. So there's actually like a practical difference here. And whether you say yes or no to this question is the ambiguity in the Dirac line of axioms with a clear, although maybe very difficult in practice to measure consequence. But but the Dirac line of axioms don't say whether you're supposed to say yes or no to that first question. You have to just choose. There's the ambiguity. We already covered what happens if you say it does collapse. Now let's suppose you say it does not collapse. If it doesn't collapse, your next question is, Despite it not collapsing, did Wigner's friend get a unique answer? Is there hidden under this wave function an actual answer that Wigner's friend knows? If you say yes, then by definition, we call that a hidden variable. By definition, we're saying that the quantum state that Wigner would have assigned is incomplete. Mm -hmm. That's the better way to say it. It's an incomplete quantum state. Or in a picture like the one I've presented, this indivisible stochastic approach, there just isn't a quantum state at a fundamental level. There are only these ways things really are. But in any event, the wave function, whether it exists or not, is simply not complete. The quantum state is not complete. And this leads you to pilot wave theories or a theory like mine, or the modal interpretations, or various perspectival interpretations, uh, or a lot of people who are working in physics implicitly take this view, but don't want to call it hidden variables. They want the overall quantum state not to collapse, but they also want there to be a fact of the matter about the result. If you do that, you are committing to some kind of hidden variables type approach, some incomplete wave function approach. If you do not say that there was, in fact, a definite result, well, then your next question is, were there many results or no results? If you say many results, then you have something like an ever-ready in many worlds picture with all of the usual problems of how to make sense of probability and the stone suit problem and all the various problems we've talked about. And if you say that there was no answer, then you run into an anti-realism loop. Well, if that result wasn't real, then are any results by anyone ever real, including Wigner or anybody? Because we could be Wigner's friend, maybe we are Wigner's friend, and if no one's ever actually getting any results, then the whole process is entirely self-undermining. I think this flowchart is really helpful in thinking about this problem. I mean, of course, one other option is that quantum theory is just totally wrong. That's, I mean, that, that may also be true. Um, that's an option. So I guess maybe before all of this is the question, do you believe quantum theory is correctly? Act- I mean, maybe that's a question. Should have started with that. Should have started with that. But if you're going to take quantum theory seriously, as I think many of us do because it works so well, then you have to take a stand somewhere in this picture. Yeah. And you can't just say, I refuse to take a stand because it's a flow chart with yes or no questions, right? 
I think the honest thing is to face up to this. So I think this gives a really clear picture. And I am very explicitly taking the point of view that the, the state vector, the quantum state, is not the full story. And in, actually, in my case, I'm saying it's not physical at all. It's merely a mathematical artifact. Um, it's uh, what I call, um, uh, um, it's, it's a, uh, what's the word I, I, I use for this? It's an appurtenance. It's an appurtenance of, of, of quantum theory. It's, it's a mathematical appurtenance. It's like a Hamilton Jacobi function or a Lagrangian. It's not like a physical object. And what's physical is the actual configuration of the system in question. 